up and down. Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's having a nice fall evening. We'll get started here in a minute, I guess. No, I guess it is the minute. All right. Tonight we've got the great honor of having Chuck Hughes here to uh, uh, give us some insights on his trading. He has won quite a few world uh, trading uh, uh, events, and he basically does it on good common sense investment practices. So uh, with that, Chuck, welcome to the Candlestick Forum. We're all anxious to see some of your techniques. Okay, great. Great. Thanks, Steve. Uh, it's great to be here, everybody. Um, I have uh, some strategies I'd like to share with you uh, tonight that I've used for many years. I've been trading for uh, 28 years, and I've been uh, developing and adjusting these strategies over all types of uh, different market conditions. And uh, uh, I've had I've had very good success uh, trading options, and I'd like to show you my best strategies for for trading options tonight. So, thanks for the introduction, Steve. And I guess we can get started. Uh, today we're going to explore um, what I call my high accuracy option trade selection, and we go through a series of uh, steps. Uh, and we use technical indicators to select options with the best uh, profit potential. And part of this uh, option trade selection is selecting an option strike price. And I have a simple, what I call the 1% formula for selecting an option strike price. As you know, depending on which uh, stock you're trading options in, if you, let's say you want to trade options in Apple or Google, there, there could be literally thousands of different strike prices to choose from. So I have a very simple uh, rule of thumb uh, called the 1% rule uh, that allows us to select a strike price with a high probability of success. And then I'll have a uh, question and answer uh, session uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions. <coughs> so. I use what I call the Prime Trade Select, which is a technical um, trading system to select a stock or ETF with the best profit potential. And as I mentioned, then we use the 1% rule to select an option strike price. And this, uh, over the last several years, this high accuracy option strategy has produced over uh, $1.8 million in actual profits uh, with an average return of 85% with 91% winning trades. And I'll show you my uh, brokerage accounts um, at the end of the presentation uh, showing this $1.8 million, $1 million in actual profits using the high accuracy option trading uh, system. So let's, let's look at the, the risks we face in general whenever we trade options. And I'm talking about purchasing options right now. I also do uh, spread strategies. Uh, but let's just talk about, you know, purchasing a call option or purchasing a put option and just take a look at the overall risk in options trading, which can be very high. Uh, options are leveraged and they provide more profit potential compared to stock investing. But of course, with that leverage, you also incur more risk. So what I did is I took a snapshot. This is an option chain for Home Depot. This was several months ago. And uh, at the time, Home Depot was trading at 77.73. So uh, this was uh, the option chain right here for the August um, options. Now, of course, these have already expired, but the, at the time I took the snapshot, there were 67 days, so a little over two months to expiration when I took the snapshot. So 
let's just assume that you are going to buy the 77 and a half strike call, which would be the at the money call because Home Depot was trading at 77, 73 at the time. So let's assume you are going to purchase this call call option at 325. Um, what I what I do here is um, I uh, plugged in these numbers into my call option purchase calculator, and what this calculator does is it will calculate the uh, profit loss potential for this option purchase, assuming various changes in Home Depot stock, in this example, from a 10% increase in the stock to a 20% decline in the stock. So we're going to see uh, what if scenarios uh, at option expiration, and of course the, the value of the option is derived by the price of Home Depot stock at option expiration. So um, I plugged in the uh, price at the time of Home Depot stock. It was 77, 73. Uh, the 77 and a half strike uh, call option was trading at 325. So I plugged those numbers in, hit calculate, and this will also, this calculator will also calculate the uh, time value of this option, which is 302, and the intrinsic value, which is 23 cents. So let's take a look at this and just see in general what we're facing when we trade options. So if you purchase this at the money call that had a little over two months to expiration, if Home Dep Depot stock is flat at option expiration and it's trading at 77.73, you'll have a 92% loss on this option. If it's down at all, you're going to have a 100% loss of this option. Uh, and uh, if it's up 5%, of course, uh, you, you have a pretty good return because options are leveraged. So um, you're always faced with this whenever you purchase a call option that you could have a 100% return. And as it turned out, at August option expirations, Home Depot closed at 75. So this, this would have been 100% loss if you had purchased the uh, call option a, a couple months uh, prior. So option trades can easily result in 100% loss. And the goal of the high accuracy option trading is to avoid large losses, which can knock you out of the game. So we, we want to avoid those 100% losers, and we want to put the odds in our favor. And <clears throat> if we're wrong, you know, we simply get stopped out of the trade, and we move on to the next trade. So you have to use this type of money management and trade selection when you're trading options. Uh, otherwise, you could easily incur 100% uh, loss. <clears throat> And of course, there's always timing risk when you enter a trade. And what I'm displaying here is the daily price chart for the VIX, which is the volatility index. And these vertical bars are the daily price of the VIX index. And every time there's a spike up in volatility, there's a corresponding decline in the stock market. So you can see, um, based on this this type of volatility that if your timing's wrong when you enter these option trades, you could easily lose 100% if your timing's not good. So we're going to look at a strategy to um, lower our risk uh, and at the same time still produce uh, a good uh, profit. And um, we'll, I'll take you through the steps that I use. I'm, I'm in the trenches every day trading in I'll take you through the steps I use to be um, a successful option trader. Okay, um, part one of our high accuracy option trading system is called Prime Trade Select. And there's three steps in Prime Trade Select. Uh, step one is we want to determine the price trend of a stock, and step two, we want to confirm the price trend. We want to determine the extent of the buying or selling pressure, the very best profit opportunities. And then step three, which is a, a really important step, is 
we want to select a low risk entry point for our option trade using the uh, Keltner channels. So if prime trade select, if a stock is on a prime trade select buy signal, uh, of course we want to buy call options um, because that's a bullish strategy. And the call option, of course, profits as the price of the stock moves up. And if we're on a prime trade select sell signal, then we want to uh, purchase put options. And the put option, of course, profits as the stock goes down in price. And this prime trade select works well in both bull and bear markets and was very profitable during the last two severe bear markets. So right now we have mostly um, bullish positions on, um, and but there are times in 2008, uh, 2009, we were heavily bearish and we made a fortune uh, on the short side, uh, both in the last bear market and then the uh, dot-com bust uh, in the early 2000s from uh, 2001 through 2002. So uh, the prime trade select works both ways. We um, can profit from buy signals. We can also profit from sell signals. And the sell signals are just the opposite of the buy signals. And um, so just keep that in mind that uh, it works both ways. And uh, when you start to go into a down market, um, you want to start looking for uh, profitable shorting opportunities because they can be very profitable during bear markets. Okay, so um, the first step is we want to determine the current price trend of the stock. Um, and I use an exponential moving average system for that. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, this, this trend following system, the exponential moving average system, uh, I've been using that for decades now, um, since the 1980s, and uh, it's the main part of my system, um, and it's a simple trend following system, and I think for uh, the average investor, that's probably one of the, the better ways to go, is just to have a simple trend system uh, to help you um, enter and exit trades. And the goal with the trend following system is to quantitatively measure <clears throat> the buying and selling pressure of a stock. And this allows us to follow the trend instead of trying to predict the trend. And this allows you to use a system instead of emotional uh, decision making. And I've been using trend following successfully for, for 28 years. So we use a simple um, trend following system exp that uses exponential moving averages. We look at the 50-day uh, exponential moving average in relation to the 100-day exponential moving average. And if the 50-day EMA, which is the shorter term average, is above the 100-day EMA, then that stock is on a buy signal. And if the 50-day EMA is below the 100-day EMA, then that stock is on a sell signal. So pretty, pretty simple system. Um, I'll show you uh, some price charts here in a minute. And um, as a matter of fact, I can look at that right now. And when you look at these 50 and 100-day EMA lines and you look at this price chart, it gives you an instant picture of the trend of that stock. So you, you get um, a really good feel for um, the uh, current trend for a stock when you use um, a trend following system. And I'm going to look at an actual trade that I have on right now, and I use Prime Trade Select um, to uh, select my current option trade, and that trade now has a 463% return. And what I'm going to do is take you through the selection process that I used to select this option. This was on uh, Cigna, the um, health insurer. And what I'm displaying here is uh, a daily price chart of Cigna. And these red and black vertical lines represent the daily price movement of Cigna. 
And then this blue line right here is the 50-day EMA, and the red line is the 100-day EMA. <clears throat> so we can see about a year ago, uh, last September, the blue line, which is that 50-day EMA, crossed above the red line. So when that 50-day EMA crossed above the 100-day EMA, then the signal was on a buy signal. And as long as the blue line is above the 100-day EMA, the red line, then that stock remains on a buy signal. And it doesn't go on into a sell signal until the uh, blue line crosses below the red line. So pretty pretty simple system for determining the price trend. So that's the first step. We want to see if the stock's on a buy signal. If it is, we're, we're going to look to buy call options. If the stock is on a sell signal, we're going to look to buy put options. So step two of prime trade select is we want to confirm the price trend. On any given day, there can be hundreds of stocks on a buy signal. So I use um, trend confirmation indicators to confirm the price trend, and this allows us to uh, narrow that list down of stocks that are on a buy signal to the stocks that have the best um, profit potential. One of the indicators we use is called on balance volume. And oh, I just wanted to mention uh, the 50 day and 100 day EMA. Uh, that can be easily downloaded from very many. Uh, there's a lot of websites out there, but uh, this one was downloaded from uh, stockcharts.com. So uh, if you go to stockcharts.com uh, and you select the uh, 50 day and 100 day EMA, It'll display um, the the two exponential moving average lines, and I just bookmark that, and then I can uh, look at stocks real quickly. And uh, you can see that it, it gives us an instant picture of the price trend of uh, a stock. So, with on balance volume, um, it measures the volume flow with a single easy to read line, which I'll show you here in a minute. And volume flow uh, precedes price movement and helps sustain the price trend. Um, so we want to take a look at this volume flow. And <clears throat> if the stock has an upsloping on balance volume line, that means that the buying pressure uh, is exceeding the selling pressure and the volume can help uh, sustain that price move. So we want to look at the on balance volume for a stock if we're thinking of uh, buying a uh, call option. And the on balance volume can be uh, loaded, uh, downloaded from stockcharts.com also. And uh, the way it's calculated is the uh, when a stock closes up, volume is added to the line, and when a stock closes down, volume is subtracted from the line. So a cumulative total of these additions and subtractions form the OBV line. Here's an example of it. Here's, uh, again, here's uh, Cigna. And uh, the, the uh, top half of the chart, of course, is the daily price movement of Cigna. And the lower chart here is the OBV line. It's this line right here. And we, we don't want to uh, it doesn't matter what the numerical value is of the OBB line. We simply want to see it sloping up uh, to confirm this price uptrend. And in this case, um, we can see that the OBV line is uh, trending up, and um, that means that the volume flow uh, for the buying pressure is heavier than the selling pressure. And, uh, of course, the volume flow helps sustain that price trend. So we want to see an upsloping on balance volume line. And another indicator I like to use is the new 52-week high list. Uh, stocks that are making a new 52-week high are in a very powerful uptrend, and they tend to continue their price uptrend. So I check this new 52-week high list almost every day. And as a matter of fact, this, this is a good starting point if you want to start uh, a list of stocks that 
you want to follow and purchase call options, uh, this is a good place to start. And you'll notice if you look at this new 52-week high list over a period of time, um, a lot of times the same stocks will keep appearing on this 52-week high list. And uh, in my experience, this is a great starting point because these stocks uh, tend to continue that uptrend. So in my trading experience, I discovered that stocks that are making a new 52-week high tend to continue their price uptrend, and that helps confirm uh, the price trend and allows us to further narrow down our buy list to those stocks with the greatest uh, profit potential. And we can download the 52-week uh, high from barchart.com. I took this snapshot uh, a couple days ago, and uh, it's pretty simple. You just uh, log on to the uh, website, select stocks, and then click 52-week highs, and it'll list all the stocks that made a new 52-week high that day. And um, Cigna's been on this uh, list many times, and um, so it, it's another indicator we use to uh, find the stocks with the best uh, profit potential. And we can see uh, from our daily price chart of Cigna that um, it's been making a series of new 52-week highs, which confirms that uh, the up price uptrend. So let's look at the uh, third step with Prime Trade Select. And uh, with step three, we the goal is to select a low-risk entry point using the Keltner channels. And this is a really important part of the uh, trade selection process. And I'm going to show you uh, several examples of how I use these Keltner channels to time my entry. And these are trades that I have on right now, but you can see uh, where I got a low-risk uh, entry point uh, using the Keltner channels. Um, uh, the Keltner channels are one of the simplest but most effective timing indicators, and they can be used to uh, help time your trade entry and exit points. Um, they also provide what I call high probability buy and sell signals. Uh, they can also be used to uh, help you select an option strike price. And then uh, they also allow you to select stocks and just focus on stocks that have repetitive and predictive price patterns. Uh, this in, in itself is, is a great feature of the Keltner channels because um, there's a lot of stocks, and I'll show you some examples here, that have no uh, repetitive or predictive price pattern. So we simply ignore those stocks, and we just like to focus on the ones that have a very predictive uh, price pattern. Uh, uh, and we just focus on those stocks because they, they have a, a better chance of success than a stock that's all over the place and very volatile. So here's a price chart, daily price chart of Home Depot. This is the daily uh, price movement of Home Depot. And the top blue line here is the upper Keltner channel. The dotted line in the middle is the middle Keltner channel, and then the lower blue line is the uh, lower channel. And the Keltner channels uh, basically act as an overbought, oversold indicator. When the stock price starts getting up, uh, near this upper channel or above it, then the stock is, is getting overbought. And usually when that happens, the stock gets overbought, it'll retrace. So we can see here it got overbought, retraced, overbought, retraced, overbought, retraced, overbought, retraced. And so you, you can see that uh, whenever the stock gets overbought and it you know actually gets above that, it's trading above the upper channel, uh, it normally will retrace, and uh, we look for that retracement to um, take our entry um, signal. 
And so when it retraces towards the middle or lower channel, then we want to buy. And we can see here it was trading near the um, lower channel. It was becoming oversold, uh, rallied, uh, trading near the lower channel, uh, becoming oversold, rallied. So the goal is that we want to buy a stock when it uh, retraces towards this middle or lower channel. And, of course, we don't want to buy when it's up. It's getting overbought and it's uh, near this upper channel or above the upper channel. Now here's an example of an another way to use these Keltner channels is uh, you want to just focus on the stocks that have a repetitive and predictive price pattern. And uh, this is a, the top chart is a price chart of Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the lower price chart is a price chart of Alcoa. And we have the uh, Keltner channels uh, on both of these price charts. And you can see J&J uh, &J has a very uh, predictable uh, repetitive price pattern. So I'd rather just focus on stocks like this than uh, a stock like Alcoa, which uh, is, is volatile and has no uh, predictive uh, price pattern. So it's much easier to trade stocks like this. Here's another example. Uh, this is for Kellogg. Uh, again, a very uh, repetitive price pattern. Uh, the lower chart is uh, Freeport. McMorin, uh, FCX, and again, you can see uh, a lot of volatility, no clear trend. So there's no point in trading a stock like that when you can trade a stock like Kellogg. Here's one more example. This is uh, Whirlpool. I've owned this for a long time. Uh, very uh, repetitive price pattern, and the lower uh, chart is uh, Potash. So. That's another useful tool for these uh, Keltner channels. Okay, let's look at um, the price chart for uh, Cigna. And this, this is the uh, price chart I was using when I selected this trade. And <clears throat> if you look at this price chart for Cigna, uh, you know, it goes from um, lower left to upper right. So <laughs> it's had a pretty big uh, price move here. And uh, the question is, when do, you, um, when do you enter a trade when a stock has already had a very large uh, price move? So uh, if we use these Keltner channels to time our entries, even though a stock's had a large price move, the Keltner channels can help us enter a trade and give us a low-risk entry point. And then we can participate in any further upside potential for the stock. So we can see uh, Cigna uh, retraced towards the lower uh, Keltner channel right here, had a big rally. And when it retraced near the channel right here, this was on June 3rd, I believe it was, uh, it got near the, this lower channel. Uh, I went ahead and uh, entered my option uh, right here uh, when it was becoming oversold. And by doing this, it put the odds in my favor that I'm, I'm going to get a low-risk entry and I'd rather buy when it's oversold. And, of course, it rallied uh, from this point and is trading up around uh, 80 right now. So uh, using these Keltner channels helped me uh, time my uh, entry. So I went ahead and bought on uh, June 3rd. I went ahead and bought the uh, July... Uh, 50 strike call option for Cigna, and I've been rolling that over the last several months, and I'm still in this uh, trade. Here's another example. This was for uh, Best Buy. Um, I still have this option, and again, we can see Best Buy has made a big move already, but right in here, uh, this was on June 24th, it got uh, right it got close to this lower Keltner channel. It was oversold, so I pulled the trigger and I bought the 20-strike uh, call right here. And 
I believe Best Buy now is trading up around uh, 39. So this this has had a huge move from this uh, oversold condition. So uh, the other thing I want to mention is um, we want to get the stock when it's oversold, but uh, we still have to check our uh, trend indicator, the 50 and 100 day EMA. And of course, we're only going to look at these retracements on stocks that are still on a buy signal. If a stock goes on a sell signal, then of course we're not going to take a long position. So we we'll use these Keltner channels only on stocks that are still on a buy signal. So again, the uh, Best Buy uh, had already had a big move, and uh, the Keltner channels allowed me to jump in on this stock when it was oversold and participate in further upside. And uh, with it trading around 39 now, it's, it's had a really big move since this uh, entry right here. Here's another example. This is for Wells Fargo, and it was Wells Fargo is getting a little overbought right here when it was uh, trading above the upper Keltner channel. So I waited to retrace to the uh, middle channel and uh, went ahead and bought an option. Okay, let's. So after we complete our three steps and we uh, we determine that the stock is on a buy signal, uh, that that trend is confirmed by either the on balance volume or the new 52 week high list, and the stock becomes temporarily oversold and it's trading near that uh, middle or lower Keltner channel, uh, and we decide to go ahead and buy an option on that stock, then you have to select uh, an option strike price, and depending on the stock, there could be hundreds of these strike prices or even thousands. So um, I use what I call the 1% rule to select um, an option strike price with a high probability of success. So when you're looking at, at several hundred different strike prices, uh, selecting the strike price is actually uh, just as important as the trade selection itself. So this is a, an important part of uh, your option trade selection is the uh, strike price. So let's just look at some um, option basics first. Um, Option premiums consist of time value and intrinsic value. And options lose all of their time value at expiration. So when you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. And uh, each day that uh, time value, that option, is going to uh, decay each day. So if you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. And then at expiration, uh, Options lose all of their time value. So you have to keep that in mind when you're uh, trading options. So these time decay characteristics of options, when you're buying an option, you want to minimize the time value because that's going to decay to zero. And you want to maximize the intrinsic value. So I've come up with a, uh, a simple rule of thumb uh, for selecting these uh, option strike prices called the 1% rule. So we want to limit the time value of the option to less than 1% of the stock price per month. And if we do that, that will uh, minimize the time value of the option and maximize the intrinsic value. So for example, if you purchase a, a one-month option and the stock's trading at 100, you want to make sure that the time value portion of that option is one point or less. Um, another example would be if you purchase a two-month option on a stock trading at 100, you want to limit that time value to two points or less. So it's 1% of the stock price per month to uh, minimize the time value. And I'll show you here some examples of why that's important. Um, if you limit the time value of the option to 1% of the stock price, the stock only has to go up 1% in order for the, your trade to break even. So this makes a huge difference. And 
if the stock only has to go up 1% for the trade to break even, you're going to have a much higher probability of success uh, compared to an option strike that requires, say, a 6 to 10 or even a 15% increase in the underlying stock in order to break even. So uh, this 1% rule, the stock only has to go up 1%, and if it goes up 1%, then any increase above that 1% uh, is profit. So uh, I like those low break-even points uh, on option trades because uh, I know if the stock goes up 1%, uh, anything above 1% is going to be uh, all profit. Rather than, say, uh, a stock that has to go up 6 to 10 or even 15%, because a lot of times, no matter what uh, trade selection system you use, a lot of times the stock's not going to go up as you uh, anticipate it. So you don't want to be taking a uh, 100% loss if you're wrong. Here's an example of an out-of-the-money call purchase. Uh, this is a... Uh, snapshot of Apple uh, options. Uh, this was uh, several years ago. At the time, um, Apple was trading at 173.25, and the 185 strike price was trading at 315. So if you buy this 185 call option, you pay 315. And this would be an out-of-the-money option because the strike price of 185 is above the stock price at the time of 173. So um, in order for this trade to break even, um, Apple stock, remember it was trading at 173, would have to trade up to 188.15, and that's over the course of one month. This was a one-month uh, quote. So in one month, the, the price of Apple stock has to increase 8. Uh, 8.6% in that one month time period in order for you to break even. So if it doesn't uh, get up there, uh, then you're looking at 100% loss for the trade. And uh, again, here's uh, the call option purchase calculator for this uh, trade with, this, with Apple at the time trading at 173 strike price of 185, the option premium of 315, we can see that this option is all time value, 315, with no intrinsic value. And if the stock is flat at expiration, you lose 100%. If the stock is up 5% at expiration, you lose 100%. So this one doesn't even break even until uh, the stock is up 8.6%. Um, so any if it's up 5%, if it's flat, if it's down at all, you're, look, you're looking at 100% loss for this trade. So let's look at an in-the-money uh, example. And again, uh, the stock at the time was trading at 173. So if we were going to buy the 150 strike call, that would be an in-the-money call. And at the time, that was trading at 2470 and we run our uh, call option purchase calculator, and we can see that this option in the money has mostly intrinsic value. It's 23.25 intrinsic value, only 135 uh, time value. So um, if we if the stock is flat at expiration, you're going to have a 5% loss as opposed to a 100% loss for the out of the money, um, and if the stock is up 5%, you're going to have a 29% return as opposed to a 100% loss for the out-of-the-money option. So this is, this is just showing you um, the difference between um, trading out-of-the-money strikes and in-the-money strikes. And with this in-the-money option, Apple stock only has to increase 1.35 points or seven tenths of one percent to break even. So, um, and you can see, uh, even though this is an in the money and it's not as leveraged as the out of the money, if Apple goes up ten percent, we're going to have a sixty-four percent return. 
If Apple goes up 15%, we're going to have a 100% return. So this this carries a lot less risk, but you still get a good return if the stock goes up. So I'd much rather trade this way than risk uh, 100% of my uh, capital. And what I'm going to show you now is uh, these trades that I have on right now. Um, I bought the, um, when the Cigna stock retraced near that lower Keltner channel, I bought the uh, 50 strike call at 17. And I did a call option purchase uh, calculation on this, this trade that I actually took. These, these are my uh, brokerage statement confirmations here. And you can see on June 3rd, I bought the uh, Cigna July uh, 50 strike call at 17 points. So, uh, this is my actual trade right here, my actual entry. So I plug this into the call option purchase calculator, and you can see the time value on this option is only 29 cents. So um, Apple only has to go up, uh, or not Apple, uh, this was Cigna. Cigna only has to go up 29 cents, and this trade's going to break even. So uh, this has much uh, lower pr risk profile than purchasing an out-of-the-money uh, option. And you can see if uh, Cygnus flat at option expiration, uh, I only incur a 1.7% uh, loss. So again, um, with only 29 cents of time value, uh, Cygnus stock only has to go up 29%, and then I break even, and then anything above that, I start profiting. So that 29 cents is only four tenths of one percent. So it doesn't take much of a move for this trade to start breaking even. So the um, intrinsic value of an option increases one point for each point for each one point that the uh, stock increases above the strike price of the option. So uh, once you get above uh, the strike price of the option, it moves uh, one for one. And in this example, uh, I only need a four-tenths of one percent increase uh, for the stock to break even. Uh, I'd much rather um, do that than uh, buy an at-the-money or out-of-money call that required, say, a six to, six to ten percent increase in the stock price to break even. And here's the uh, Best Buy example, um, and uh, I purchased, uh, this was on June 24th, I purchased the um, August 20 strike call, and with uh, Best Buy at the time trading at 26, uh, 46, this, this was uh, in the money option, and this option only had 18 cents of time value, so again, uh, Best Buy only has to go up 18 cents, and I break even, and then I start to make money after that. So let's let's look at some um, actual trading results for this uh, high accuracy um, option trading uh, system that I use. And what I'm going to do is just quickly go through my brokerage statements here, and they show. Um, over one million, over 1.8 million dollars in profits. Uh, the average return on these uh, trades was 85 percent. Uh, there was 183 wins, 17 losers, so it was about 91 percent accurate. So uh, this first one, uh, this account, uh, had an average return of 198 uh, percent. Here's another one. This one had an average return of 75 percent. Uh, this one had uh, $254,000 in open trade profits, average return of 114 percent. So I'll just go through these, but these all total uh, a little over uh, 1.8 million dollars in profits. Uh, I just wanted wanted you to see some some real results to um, get a feel for this high accuracy uh, trading and that it really does work.
Okay, so th that's some real-time results for you. And I also um, use this high-accuracy uh, selection process uh, to select trades for my uh, advisory service. And um, we currently, uh, well, this is the, this is the uh, return for the market neutral strategy, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. Uh, somewhere I have the uh, 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 open trade, current open trade results for the uh, option purchases. So I'll show you that in a minute. So the uh, high accuracy option trading uh, has produced a lot of winning trades. So uh, now, if you if you buy a call option, and let's say you have a 30%, a 50%, or even 100% return, now you have to face uh, the decision: Do I want to close that out in case that stock starts going back down again, and, and that option could actually turn into a, a loss? So, uh, or do you want to hold the option in, in case of further upside gain? So. Um, that's always the dilemma, and that's a good problem to have, but you always face that dilemma when you buy a call option and uh, you have a profit in that call option, then what do you do? So, um, you know, a lot of times this is a hard decision because you don't want to give up any potential profits. Uh, at the same time, you don't want to <laughs> give up the existing profits and have that uh, trade turn into a loss. So. What I do is I simply uh, purchase a put option, and that allows me to lock in my profit. And at the same time, uh, it doesn't limit my upside potential. So if you have a call option and you have a profit on it, you buy a put option, depending on the strike prices, you can, you can lock in your existing profit. And if that stock keeps going up in price, you'll keep profiting. So the put option, purchasing the put option, doesn't limit your um, upside potential. So I'll show you some uh, examples of that. Um, now what I did, here's this brokerage transaction right here shows, again, on June 3rd, I bought that 50 strike call at 17 points. So uh, the stock uh, moved up in price. Uh, I had a nice profit in the option, so I didn't want to give up that profit. And at the same time, um, I, did, I didn't want to limit my upside potential in case Cigna kept going up, which it did. So I purchased the um, 72 and a half strike put option at 142. So this was uh, protection that locked in profits and at the same time um, allowed me to participate in any further or upside potential, and um, I have a market neutral calculator. I call this this trade a market neutral trade because you have a, a long and you have a short position. And um, so, with Cigna stock trading at 76.36, uh, bought the 50 strike call at 17, bought the 72 and a half strike put at 142. So, what this did was. Um, it locked in a profit. No matter what happens, I'm going to have a, at least a 22% return. And if uh, Cigna f stock is flat at option expiration, I'm going to have a 43% return. If Cigna stock goes up 10%, I'm going to have an 84% return. So you can see I still have a good upside potential here uh, with this market neutral trade. Uh, but again, if uh, the stock goes down, I'm going to have uh, at least a 22% profit. And then if it really starts going down, then I make even more money off the uh, put option that I purchased. So this is a great way um, when you, you know, to lock in your profits and uh, still participate in further upside potential. And I did the same thing with the uh, Best Buy trade. Um, I had a profit in the uh, 20 strike call that I purchased. So I went ahead and purchased the 30 strike put. And uh, this is the uh, risk profile for this market neutral spread. We can see 
Uh, my minimum profit is 22.9%, and uh, if the stock goes up 10%, uh, I would get a 60% return. So uh, this is a great way to trade options. And another thing, when you have, when you buy this put option, and you lock in this minimum profit here, uh, then you don't have to worry about um, earnings reports or bad news that comes out about the stock or downgrades or macroeconomic data. <laughs> you simply uh, buy the put option, lock in your profit, um, and at the same time participate in any further upside moves, and you just hold it until um, option expiration. You don't have to worry about big down moves in the stock. You don't have to worry about putting a protective stop in. You just, it's a very, um, uh, it's a very low risk way and uh, a very low stress way to trade options. Because you know no matter what happens to the underlying stock, you're still going to make a profit. And one last thing I wanted to cover here, um, when you get to option expiration, then you're faced with another high quality problem. Should I roll over the option trade or should I close the position? So what I do is um, if the stock is still on a prime trade select buy signal, um, then I'll roll over this market neutral spread and I'll uh, buy, uh, I'll close out the expiring options, I'll buy a call and buy a put for the next month. And when you do this, uh, the profit you realize on the spread that you're closing out reduces the cost basis of your new position. So now you're risking a lot less money and your returns, your, that allows you to compound your returns. So, uh, just real quickly here, I'll show you an example of this. This was uh, Costco. Uh, the stock was on a prime trade select buy signal. Uh, I bought the uh, July 95 call for 1540, and uh, this uh, brokerage account gain and loss uh, report here shows I bought uh, bought the option at 1540, sold it at 2257. So I had a 7.17 7 point profit on this option trade. So what I want to do is roll this over into the August option. And um, if I do that, then this profit is going to reduce the uh, cost of the August position. And uh, that's what I did. Uh, you can see here I uh, bought the August uh, 105 call and then bought the August 115 put. And here's the risk profile for this trade. Now this is, this is after rolling it over and reducing the cost basis of the new uh, trade. Now my minimum profit, no matter what happens, is 100.8%. So by rolling over these trades, you're reducing your cost basis, you're reducing your risk, and you're compounding your returns. And here's an example of the the actual uh, option spread order I used to roll over from the, uh, uh, well, in this case, this is from August to September. So I rolled it over into the August options when uh, at, at August option expiration, I rolled it over again to September options. And this is the actual trade I used, uh, the actual uh, spread trade I used. And I like to use a spread order when I'm rolling over. Uh, because it reduces your commission costs, and I can usually split the uh, the difference between the bid ask spread on this order. I put it in as a limit order, and I can usually get filled at that. So this reduces your transaction costs. So you can see with this spread order, um, I closed out the August option, and then I bought the uh, September option. And th these these are the call options. Here's the spread order I used to uh, close out the August put and uh, by the uh, September put. So uh, after I put on this September trade, <laughs> then Costco declined. You can see it was trading up around 120. 
and it got down uh, almost to about the 110 level. So uh, because I had this market neutral spread, I, I locked in at least 100% return, and uh, no matter what happens to the underlying uh, stock price. So here's a here's a prime example of why you want to buy that put put protection and. Uh, if I had just purchased the September 115 call, um, Costco would have to close above 115 in order for the uh, trade to start breaking even um, or to have any value. And if at option expiration, if the stock is trading at 115 or less, then I experience 100% uh, loss if I just own the call. So. That's the value of owning these puts. Um, if the stock goes down, instead of having 100% loss on the call, you're going to have uh, an overall profit on the uh, spread. And here's a snapshot. This is my current uh, market neutral uh, portfolio. And this is, I have spread trades on for Cigna, Costco, Johnson & Johnson, Starbucks, Wells Fargo, and Yahoo. So right now, this um, and this is a, a portfolio, a my brokerage account portfolio profit loss report, and so these are actual trades here. So my uh, average return is 422.8 percent right now on these market neutral uh, spreads, and uh, I also trade these in my advisory service, and we currently have a 156 thousand uh, dollar open trade profit. Average return of 382 percent, and this uh, table lists the uh, trades that we have on right now uh, that have an average return of 382 percent. So, um, I wanted to just talk uh, lastly here about my uh, Cash Cow newsletter. This is a newsletter uh, that I write, and I believe the price is. Uh, uh, $97 for three months. So in this newsletter, what I do is I make trade recommendations for my various option strategies. And uh, uh, it comes out every week. And uh, I, I wanted to show you the, the three trades that we recommended yesterday. Um, now, this was a uh, – we recommended yesterday in the Cash Cow newsletter a market-neutral uh, – spread trade for uh, Cigna. Uh, Cigna retraced back towards that uh, middle Keltner channel, uh, is setting up a good buy opportunity. So we recommended a market neutral trade on this. We bought uh, an October call, and then we bought an October put. Uh, here's another uh, signal that went out yesterday. And this was for an option purchase for uh, LinkedIn. And we used uh, Prime Trade Select to select this uh, option purchase. Here's another trade that we recommended. This is a uh, option debit spread for Kehoe. So uh, I just want to mention that if you want to take a look at these strategies, uh, we every week we come out with uh, a new uh, newsletter. And my son Ryan helps me uh, write the newsletter, and of course he's available to answer any questions. So. That concludes my uh, presentation for now, and I'd be glad to uh, take any uh, uh, questions. And we're also uh, going to show um, a link that you can use if you want to um, order this uh, Cash Cow newsletter. Okay, let's see here. Okay, here's a, here's a question from Jimmy. Uh, do you buy the put when you first put the trade on? And Jimmy, these uh, market neutral trades, there's, there's two ways you can um, trade these. Uh, you can buy the call and buy the put simultaneously. Uh, or you can leg into the spread. And if you buy a call option and have a profit in it, you can buy the uh, put at a later date, and uh, so there's two ways to enter these trades. We do, we do it both ways. Sometimes we'll buy the call, buy the put simultaneously, 
and then sometimes if we have um, a profit in our option purchase portfolio, then we'll just go ahead and buy a put uh, to lock in that profit. So that, that can be done either way. You can either buy them sim simultaneously or leg into the spread. And here's here's a, a question um, about how do you how you cl calculate the one percent uh, time value of uh, of an option? And um, I uh, I use my um, option calculators. I have uh, I think it's six or seven different types of option calculators uh, that I make available to my members of my advisory service and. Uh, they can they can um, calculate the profit loss potential for these option trades and option spread trades uh, before they take the trade. So, and w one of the features is it'll tell you what the time value is and also tell you what the intrinsic value is. So that's one way of doing it. You can also uh, do it manually, and if you look at option basics. Uh, it, in any of my books where I have the option basics, it'll tell you how to calculate that time value um, and the intrinsic value. Okay. Um, okay, here's a question from Jerry. Can I trade these strategies out of out of market hours? And um, uh, to answer your question, Jerry, um, you these these are longer term uh, trades. So, you know, you uh, you could trade them um, during the day, or just have an order in for the next day. Uh, there's no there's no big time pressure with uh, these types of trades because they're longer term trades. And uh, if you wait till the next morning, you know, and you have a, a resting order, you know, to to buy them on the open, you know, sometimes you'll get a better fill because you waited. Other times uh, you'll get a worse fill because you waited, but uh, they, that pretty much evens out. So uh, whether you take this trade during the day, during market hours, or the next morning, uh, I think over the long run it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, uh, it says, how do you account for Vega? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what Vega is. <laughs> uh, here's a question. Uh, Cash Cow Link, uh, I think... Um, I think Becky was going to uh, uh, put that cash cow link uh, in below so you can see that. And um, we're also recording this, and um, you know we'll uh, we'll get that link to you if you're interested in the uh, cash cow. Okay, Frank, here's a. Question from Frank: So much for knowing the Greeks. Uh, yeah, Frank, I don't uh, look at the Greeks. Um, I simply look at. Uh, I, I use my systems, and I know if I buy a call option on a stock, and the stock goes up, I make money. <laughs> I, I try not to get any more complicated than that. And if I buy a call option and the stock goes down, I lose money. So uh, I don't really pay any attention to the Greeks. Uh, I really you know, for my style of trading, um, I, I haven't found a way to use them. Uh, I simply uh, pick stocks that are in a price uptrend, and uh, I pick a low-risk entry, and, uh, you know, most of the time it works out, and uh, if the stock goes up, and I buy a call option, I make money. Okay. Oh, here's here's a question. When do I get out of a bad trade? That's that's a great question. Um, if you buy a call option and you just own the call and you don't have the corresponding put, and you simply own the call, we use a money management system where we'll exit that call if the price drops 20 to 30 percent below our entry level. And because we buy in the money options, then we can use this money management system um, and just simply exit at a loss if the position goes against us. And uh, I give the options a little a little higher percentage uh, stop uh, compared to stocks because the options are leveraged, obviously. So you want to give them a little more room than I would with stocks. So 
most will usually um, exit uh, if there's a 20 to 30 percent drop below our entry price. Uh, and many times we'll exit even before then if, if it looks like the trade's not working out. But we use money management rules. We exit the uh, option, which brings up another good point. If you're trading at the money uh, or out of the money options, in one day, you know, you could have a 50 to 100 percent loss. So when you're trading these at the money or out of the money options, you can't really use a money management system like we do. But by trading in the money options, we can use this money management system because uh, we're less, we have less leverage. And if the position goes against us, we can get out with, a, uh, say, a 20 to 30 percent loss instead of uh, an at the money or out of the money call, which could have a 50 percent or even 100 percent. 100% loss in one day. Okay, here's a question. Do you sometimes just buy the stock or ETF rather than the option? Uh, yes. Um, we, we also have stock portfolios. We use Prime Trade Select to uh, select our stocks and ETFs. So we also uh, trade stocks and the ETFs uh, without the option. So the Prime Trade Select um, in, in my basic trend following system I've been using for 28 years and it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's worked well for me. It says, are your trades mostly calls, puts, or spreads? And uh, we uh, trade both. We, we have a portfolio where we just purchase calls or we purchase puts. Then we have another portfolio where we trade option spreads, debit spreads. Then we have another portfolio where we trade market neutral spreads. So we have a, a combination of both uh, options and, and spread trades. Okay, here's, here's a question from Frenchie. Do you prefer, uh, prefer a debit spread or a credit spread? And uh, uh, I prefer the debit spreads myself, and that's what we, uh, that's what I actually trade in my account, and um, that's what we recommend for our advisory service. Okay. Um, it says, are you trading all the portfolios in the money? Um, this question's from Mike, and uh, yes, Mike, if we're if we're purchasing an option, uh, we will uh, normally uh, trade in the money, and if we're trading uh, a spread that has downside protection, then we will normally trade at the money or slightly in the money uh, with an option spread because it does have some downside protection. And then, of course, with the market neutral uh, spread trade, uh, you, you, we normally will buy the at the money put. And then, of course, uh, that allows us to uh, lock in a profit if we, if we have an existing profit. And at the same time, it doesn't limit our uh, uh, upside potential. OK, here's another question about that link to the Cash Cow newsletter. Uh, I was hoping Becky was able to um, ho post that link here. So um, we'll have to get back to everybody that attended um, so that we can uh, email you that link. Um, and uh, let's see here. Oh, I think I may. Uh, these uh, questions keep jumping around here. So. I thought I had that uh, link here, but apparently I don't. Um, okay. I think I have the link. And... Oh, it won't let me post it for some reason. Okay. Well, we'll have to get back to everybody. Uh, we'll send you an email, get in touch with you with, for that link uh, that goes to uh, order the uh, the cash cow um, 
newsletters. Uh, here's a question from John. How do I get the risk calculators? Uh, John, I give those uh, calculators to all the members of my uh, advisory service. And as I mentioned, we have, uh, I think it's six or seven now, calculators for all the different option strategies that we use. And those are available to uh, members of my um, advisory service. OK, um, I think that answers most of the, the questions. So uh, I want to thank uh, Steve and Becky for allowing me to uh, give this webinar. Um, I enjoy giving these webinars. Uh, it's a way for me to stay in touch with uh, my members. And um, I, uh, I, I, I'd like to um, actually write down my thought process with these uh, you know, for the trades that I actually take, and uh, it helps me to uh, clarify and quantify my methods, and um, I enjoy uh, doing these uh, webinars. Okay, I want to thank everybody, and um, hopefully we'll uh, have another webinar sometime soon, and uh, uh, good luck and good trading. Good night, everybody. Chuck, yeah, Chuck, thank you very yeah. much. That was very good information. Um, okay, thank you, Steve. I Sorry it went, it went over, but <laughs> no, no I had a lot problem. of stuff It was there. interesting. I don't think anybody was uh, dozing off. So uh, good information. Again, everybody, the more information you can put into your own type of uh, trading style and the way, way you might be thinking, the better off you're going to be. So this was good stuff. It works. and. Uh, Chuck, again, shows you what he's actually done through the years um, with his trading success. So this isn't uh, somebody's theory. This is actual trading. So, Chuck, thank you very much. We will have you back, and hope, hopefully uh, see you in Las Vegas again here sometime. Okay, sounds good, Stephen. Have a great, great night, and thank you for allowing me to uh, give the webinar. Have a great evening, everybody.